So the last thing that I want to talk to you about is um, creating painterly photos with your iPhone, both with um, gadgets that you can add and with apps as well. So this is with Distressed FX, uh, a shot from my town. But let's start with things that you can add. This is an Olo clip, and it's how I get close. Because you know you can only get like, I don't know, eight inches away probably with, with your iPhone. And when I want to put an emphasis just on, on the curves or the pedals, I want to get close. So I, I got an Olo clip recently. And with the Olo clip, I can shoot at a, um, a times 7, times 14, and times 21. There's actually three options on the clip. And it just clips right on, slides onto the top of your phone. Um, the hardest part that I have is that it, you, ha you have to get so close. You know, I kind of would like to have something in, the mi in between my regular phone and, and the Olo clip, but I'm having a ball with this, um, getting in really, really close and, uh, and shooting flowers with it. There's two more shots from, uh, from the Olo clip. Very, very fun. There's no way I could get that close without it. And these are also macros with it. Dandelion and dew, and it's, it's quite sharp as well. This is the same subject, but I got a little bit closer on the right. And then on the olive clip, there's a little glass cover. I left it on to see what it would be like to shoot through it. So that's why that one sort of has that diffused look. I asked myself, what would happen if I left left it on and I kind of liked it um, so something else to try and those are also both close-up of a magnolia and the base of a tulip getting me in really close and really soft you can see the detail falls off quite a bit when you're in that close but my favorite gadget for adding to my phone is the Lens Baby mobile kit. I was so excited when they came out with this because being able to have a Lens Baby with me all the time was r really, really exciting for me. So my case is by Mophie and it allows me to take the top, just the top off, so I don't have to take my whole phone out. And then I just would attach, there's a little gadget to attach the Lens Baby so that it lines right up and then you don't have to add anything permanent to your camera. You don't have to glue magnets or anything. And it just sticks right on like that. And there's an app that you would purchase um, to go along with it as well, to shoot with it. And there are, um, there are three different lenses currently right now. The um, LM10 is this little long one right here. Has a, a small sweet spot. The sweet spot is the area in focus, so it has a small sweet spot and smooth blur. So you would, I'm going to show you in the video, but you'll be um, opening the app, and then you can move that area of focus anywhere you want on your screen of your phone with that app. It doesn't have to be centered, so yeah, it's, it's really fun. You just give it a little pinch, and that activates it, and then you can just move it wherever you want, double tap it to focus, and, uh, and play. Here are a couple more, and you can see that the area in focus is pretty small, and I can, um, I can also get quite close with this as well. These are both in my garden, a cosmos on the right, and uh, one of my dahlias. And you can see in the dahlia what I'm talking about distortion in the lens, baby. You really see that. It's not just blur. It's also distortion. And these are also both. One on the left is just inside my house. I put a scarf behind the flowers. Um, it's a winter shot, and I have to have something besides snow to shoot. And uh, the other one is a, just a cosmos in my garden. And these both have had filters added to them, but um, they're still, they were taken with the Lens Baby LM10. And these as well. It's probably my favorite um, of the three but I'll show you the other two as well. The other thing that you can do with the Lens Baby app is that you can shoot video as well. So that, picture this, you've got one area in focus, and if you shoot a moving subject that's coming in and out of focus, and this is what it looks like. It's pretty wild. And I'm not gonna let you watch this too long because I don't want to hypnotize anybody. <laughs> As much fun as that might be, <laughs> can I? We could have some fun with that. 
Um, so next they came out with the LM20 and the LM30, and now they sell them as a kit. But the LM20 um, is just a, a, that's the 30, is the same size as 30. It's just a, a little wider. The difference is that the sweet spot is a, a little larger. So a lot of people find that easier to use, having just like when you're starting to use a lens baby and I told you to, uh, that the larger sweet spot would be easier to use. The same goes for the phone. The LM20, having a, a bit larger sweet spot is a little bit easier. I focused on the center of the rose and then this was a wonderful little statue at the casita that I stayed at in Santa Fe. I thought it was beautiful and, uh, and I really just wanted to focus on the faces and let the rest fade off to blur. The lens baby was great for that. You can see, compared to the other flower shots that I showed you, look how much more I have in focus here, how much bigger the LM20 sweet spot of focus is. And same here. There's quite a bit in focus. And you can get a good, sharp focus. Here, too, if you don't have a steady hand, they make little tripods and little clamps and, and attachments you can put on your tripod for your phone. These are, are handheld, and that is a little tricky because it, it, I can stay pretty steady with a camera. I can brace my arms you know, against my sides, but with a phone, it's really hard not to move. Then they came out with the LensBaby LM30, which looks just like the 20, except it has sort of a prism um, set up inside the glasses is shaped for a prism. So you end up with your subject in focus and a prism-like copy of that all around the edges. This is a rose that I shot with it. It's probably the one I use the least um, because you have to have just the right subject for it. Um, and uh, it's, it's just not my favorite. So, yes. A couple of cues, uh, Kathleen, before we yeah. move on uh, about the Lens Baby app. So, do you know, this is from Beth, do you know if you can use the Allo Clip lens with a Lens Baby mount? No. Okay. Nope. No, it's a whole different shape. I don't think so. And do you know, this is from Jennifer Selberg, if you can use an Android phone or only an iPhone? For the Lens, lens Baby? Baby? No, they do make them for for the different models of phone. They awesome. started with just the iPhone, sort of to see how it was going to go, and then they did make them for the other phones. Great, and just for uh, somebody who had asked, the, the case that you're using, this yes. is for Dwayne, is Mophie, Mophie. is the brand, yeah. M-O-P-H-I-E. Yes, and it also comes with a whole another battery charge in it. It's a little heavier, but I get a, another day's battery, so it's a win-win for me. And I don't have to take my, my um, camera, com my phone completely out of the case. I can just pop this in my pocket or, uh, or in the lens baby case. Great. Do you Thank guys you. have questions on this at all? Okay. I want to talk about two of my uh, favorite apps and then I'm going to show you a video where I used the lens baby so you can see how I focus and then used these two apps as well. Since I love vertical panning so much, it probably comes as no surprise to you that I love the slow shutter app. It's, it's just fabulous, and it's just done in the same way. Camera up, slide it down, slide it to the side, um, and you can go in and, um, and set how long you want your exposure, just like you did. Um, two seconds is usually a good amount for me with that, uh, that app, but, and it doesn't have to be a, a linear subject. Um, did it with ferns, with autumn foliage, doorways. It's a doorway in New York City that I thought was fun. And the other is a, um, an archway in Santa Fe. So just um, a different way of capturing it. Works for trees in all seasons as well. And here, too, you're looking at for the same things that you were when you were doing this panning with your phone. You're looking for good spaces between the trees, good lines in your subject as well. The other one that I want to talk to you about is Average Cam Pro, and this mimics what I did with multiple exposure, but with my phone. So instead of taking my camera and doing that click, 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 I'm doing it with my phone. And I can control the amount of exposures. I can set the amount of exposure. Here, too, I usually use an odd number, three or five. Um, and being able to do multiple exposure with my phone is <laughs> really, really fun. 
Here's a couple more samples. Just moving in close to my subject, starting it, and then just moving as, I, as it takes the shutter. And you can see the numbers right on the back of the screen through, you know, of your exposure, so you know when you're done. You can, then you can decide whether you want to save it or delete it. But these were also done with that same app. And this is up at Acadia. Same kind of a thing. Instead of turning, I went this way. So it was click, 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 click. And same with this. Just moving down with a little bit of an angle. I think that's five exposures probably. And one more. So let me show you how I use those three things. The Lens Baby, Slow Shutter, and Average Cam Pro. I want to show you how I use two of my very favorite iPhone apps to create painterly photographs. The first is called Slow Shutter, and it's for long exposures. So what I like to do is combine that long exposure with camera movement. So I have the app set for a two-second exposure, and when I use this app, I'm usually looking for long, linear subjects, and there are some gorgeous, really tall trees here, and I think they would be perfect for the Slow Shutter app. So all you do is frame your subject, push start, and then move the camera slowly, or the phone, slowly down for two seconds. And then we'll ask if you want to save it or clear it. If you love it, save it. If you don't, clear it and do it again. Every time you do this, your results will be a little bit different, so I encourage you to take more than one shot. The other app that I want to show you is called Average Cam Pro. And with that, we can do multiple exposures like I showed you in camera, but with your phone. So let's open that. And here too, you can set the number of exposures that you want. I'm going to go with, let's see. I'm gonna go with just three exposures for this. You can set one, three, five. Again, I generally will do odd numbers. If you want to do a double exposure, you would just set two. So you can do that as well. But let's try three. And again, I'm choosing a subject that's compact, has a lot of shape to it. So I'll fill the frame with my subject. Focus in. Start it. And then take three shots. And each time I move the camera, takes another shot, it combines and we're going to get that same swirl pattern. And again with this, you don't have to do a swirl pattern. You could be moving down, sideways, tilt it, whatever you want. Be creative. And the last thing that I want to show you for iPhone is the LensBaby mobile app, which allows you to shoot LensBaby photos with your phone. I'm going to take a short walk over here for the subject for that. LensBaby mobile comes with an app, so I'm going to open that up. And this is a case made by Mophie and it allows me to pull the top of the case right off so that I can attach the Lens Baby mobile lens. It also comes with this little gadget that fits over the top of my camera so that it lines the lens up exactly where it needs to go and you don't have to attach anything permanent to your phone. And then it's a matter of getting into your subject. I'm shooting this Love in a Mist, and if I tap, I'll focus, and if I pinch, I can move that area of focus anywhere that I want in the frame. I'm going to move it here in the upper third, and then refocus, take the shot. Now these are moving a little bit because they were really tiny flowers, so I'm going to be taking more than one shot. A little bit of a different angle. Lens baby photos right on your phone. Who would have thought? Any of you have questions about any of those three things? We do have a couple of clarification questions okay. coming in from folks at home. Um, so first of all, Linda is asking, can the iPhone images photos be printed the same as your DSLR? Are they high res enough? They're not high res for this. They're, high, they're, they're fine for 8x10, 8x12, even 11x14 probably. No, you're not going to get billboard size images um, from them. 
Great. So the next question is from Sunrise, and I think we knew this might happen, but <laughs> the, the name of the app um, she's asking, is it Slow Shutter or Slow Shutter Cam? So just it's just Slow sh Shutter. Slow Shutter. Yeah. Awesome. And let's see, maybe you can just mention what those apps were again. Yes, Average Cam Pro and Slow Shutter. And if, you, and if you buy the class, if you go back, I had the icon of the app listed because there are a lot that sound the same. I mean, there's so many apps, but um, the icon is, is listed right with, um, with the first slide of every one of those. Great. And then another question came in from Nicole Wild. Are these app photos using the Lens Baby mobile clip as well or just with your phone? You're not needing to use a lens and the phone the, for, for not for the average the cam apps. pro and slow shutter. Correct. Yeah, only for the lens baby photos did I have to do that. Correct. Yep. Great. I think those were the the clarification. If you questions. try and shoot with just the lens baby app and not this attached, your pictures will be upside down. <laughs> so if you think you can just get the app and do it, it no, it's not going, not going to work. But uh, like I said, there are a ton and every day new iPhone apps for creating painterly effects. Some I love, some I don't. Some I have had on my phone for three months and haven't had a chance to try yet. It's a new one that uh, I just downloaded yesterday that I'm looking for. But let's talk about um, my favorite um, processing apps. I think Snapseed is a must as a basic processing app. It's sort of your, your Photoshop for, uh, for your photos. You can tune um, brightness, darkness, sharpness. You can straighten, um, do a vignette. There's a healing brush. You can rotate. It's just a really good basic place to start um, for basic adjustments. It also has some wonderful filters uh, for blur and uh, glamour glow and some different effects that you can add. But I generally am just using the tools part um, of this app, but it's, um, it's a must. For this photo, I shot this through a barn, and, um, and I really needed Snapseed to tone down the brightness in the barn, then through the, in the view through the barn, and then open the barn up a little bit so you could see a little bit more detail, and that was really easy to do. And I added a little more saturation as well to the, um, the center area and the reflection in the windows. So it's a good place to start with an iPhone photo. This is another favorite called Waterlog, and it creates watercolor paintings. Um, I find this one a little tricky to use. You need just the right subject, and I'm still searching to know just what the, just what the right subject is. I'll take something and I'll think, which I'm doing a lot with my phone now. When I take it, I'm thinking about the app. Mm, Waterlog, and then it'll either be fabulous or it'll be horrendous. Um, so um, you have to experiment with this one a lot. This is a casita in uh, Santa Fe and I think it worked really well for a watercolor look. And it has uh, lots of different presets and um, you can choose different amounts of detail and you can make your watercolor bold as you could with a watercolor painting. There are um, different things that you can change. It's not just one setting. And this is, these two are also with uh, with waterlog. I find things with a lot of detail seem to be working well with, with waterlog. Um, but it's, it's really fun. And rather than just have a documentary shot of that gate, I have a, a painting of it instead. And these are both from Longwood Gardens. The waterlog. My very favorite app is called Formulas. It's a uh, create some, um, you can add textures. There are also some presets that are sort of like the old alternative processes like uh, cyanotype and ferrotype and, and some different things. And um, I think there are 12, 15 um, different presets for it. But it, it is my very favorite. Um, a couple of them add warmth and texture like the Nautilus shell on the right and then there's some flare and some warmth on the shot of the gentleman that I took in Charleston. Again, warmth and brush strokes, and I'm all, I'm all about brush strokes with my textures and, uh, and presets. So I think uh, the shot on the right, um, I took in uh, my uncle's house, and he had uh, just passed away. 
and we were cleaning out his house and the curtain was just moving slightly and just a straight documentary shot of that was was boring but when I took it into formulas to me it, it gave it life and uh, and it uh, has a special meaning to me. The sailboat is uh, shot from Central Park and uh, the woman that I was shooting with, Nina, if you're listening, Nina, um, said that she'd been trying to shoot these, these boats and, and just couldn't do it. And I shot it with my phone and then put it into formulas. And uh, she saw the photo on Instagram and said, well, yeah, you did it. And that's what we were looking for. And uh, the shot on the right is probably the preset that I use the most. You can see the brush strokes in it. Adds a little bit of warmth as well to a scene. And these are also both. You, as you can see in the one on the right, I use that preset a lot. <laughs> Same brush strokes, and the flower, and uh, the the pink that it the pink also comes from that preset. Uh, and there's sort of an opening in the middle where it's uh, a very lighter consistency. It's not completely open, but less. And so the detail in my subject was in the center, so that that preset worked really well to just fill in texture around the edges and and leave the opening. I also love distressed FX. Um, Distressed FX has textures and color presets, uh, and you can add birds. Those are not, <laughs> those birds are not native to that scene. This is Ireland, and I, I added the birds. <laughs> You're going to see those, that same bird formation in a couple of other shots. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, um, and also a wonderful texture. There are two, you can make slight adjustments, and then there are two main sliders, one with different color presets and one with different uh, texture presets, and you can use one, you can use both, and then you can add the birds. There are those birds again, <laughs> same format with a coastal scene, but I used a different texture on that one. Um, and there are probably seven or eight, I think, different formations of birds. You'll see one more. Um, but you don't have to add the birds. <laughs> found this planter uh, in Santa Fe and loved the colors and it was textured but I wanted a, a little more texture and uh, some boats with some wonderful light created by a storm that had just passed on on the left and I wanted to make that more dramatic and the, the color preset that I used has added blue at the top and gold at the bottom which worked really well and then a heavy texture and more birds which also were not there <laughs> also added in a different formation. And here I just really wanted a heavily, a heavily textured look to this coastal scene with the lobster boats in the, there was low fog and it was just coming in right over the water and uh, shot the boats in it with my phone. One of my other favorites is Tiny Planets. I know if you um, have played with Tiny Planet, this is just, this is actually a shot of the Angel Oak in Charleston. I don't know if you've seen it. It's that really old tree with all the branches. And I didn't really, I shot it in a normal way, but then thought, what else could I do with it and put it into Tiny Planet? And <laughs> I loved it. It's, it's odd, yes, but, um, but, and distorted and a little dark and spooky, but, but I really like it. And I've been doing it with some of my flowers too. These are just flower macros, a straight shot with a flower filling the frame. And then you put it into tiny planets and you can choose whether you want um, the, it, the subject to go in or out of the circle. And, uh, you, can, and <laughs> you can also make videos. Now this might make you dizzy, <laughs> I'm gonna warn you, so look away if you're feeling queasy. But um, I just wanna show you how it actually takes your picture and distorts it. Is that not wild? <laughs> yeah, it's a short video. But that shows you both of the ways that it transforms your pictures and you can uh, play with video as well. One of my other favorites is called Brushstroke, and it's a true painter painting app uh, for painterly effects. There are dozens of presets um, of brushstroke effects to choose from, from very subtle to very dramatic. And, uh, and with all of them, you can reduce the opacity of the effect um, if you would like to. The tree on the left is at outside Winslow Homer Studio, and it had beautiful branches, and I thought it would make a beautiful painting. And then, uh, the rows, you can actually see the brush strokes very clearly in the rows. You'll end up with a, a few favorite 
presets, and I really wish there was a way to save your favorites so that you could just go to those and not have to scroll through all of them. But if there is, I haven't found it yet. Um, but you will, uh, with any, as with any app that has presets, you'll find some that are your very favorites. So you can go from just a subtle effect, very light brush strokes. You can also apply the filter, and then you can um, take the original and layer them together with a, um, one of the layering apps, and that will also reduce the effect a little bit. Or you may want to go for a very strong painterly look, which I did at Longwood Gardens, and Longwood Gardens featured this on their Instagram. They liked it too. So you could use an app like um, uh, Pick a Merge or Image Blender to blend the original with, um, with the painterly one if you just want a, a little bit of a painterly effect. And uh, I wanted to talk just for a minute about Instagram because I think Instagram can be really good for photographers. It's a place to share and view photos every day. I get so much inspiration from it. And there's no drama. There's no politics. It's, <laughs> it's all about photos. Um, and, um, and if you want to follow me, I'm just at Kathleen Clemens. That's pretty easy to remember. And, um, if you tag your photos 365KC, I'll see what you're shooting. Because every day I go in at that tag and, I, and um, I like to see what my students and my friends are shooting. So I can see your photos if you tag that. And the reason that I think Instagram can be really good for photographers and um, shooting with your phone can be, you don't have to shoot with your phone for Instagram. I choose to because it got me using my phone. I made myself a pledge that I would take a shot. I, I would not take a shot. I would put a shot up every day on Instagram. That doesn't mean I shot it that day, but I process it, processed it that day if I didn't shoot it that day. So I always take extras. Um, but it gets me doing something artistic with my phone, camera phone, every single day. So if I'm not shooting, I'm playing with apps, I'm processing, and I'm uploading a photo. And I'm in the middle of my second year, and I have not missed a day yet. Um, and you don't have to do that. I'm not trying to pressure you into submitting a photo every day. But if you're, you know, it's, it's good for you to be doing something artistic. And the, one of the best things about shooting with your phone is that it takes a lot of the, the heavy technical stuff away. I mean, you're still dealing with light. You're still dealing with composition, but you're worrying less about aperture and, you know, and, and all the other, and gear and lens changes. It's just you and your phone. And the more you use your phone, I think, you know, you're composing more, you're shooting more. That's going to show in your other photography as well because you're getting more practice on a daily basis. So it can only be good things for you. So I would uh, encourage you to join me on Instagram. And here's just a, a picture of the my recent uh, shots, so every day. And it's not always a flower at wherever I am. And um, when I shot the new textured glass shots with, with my friends and we were holding it for each other and I went, oh, iPhone, and I, you know, and I shot it with my iPhone as well. So it's, uh, it's all good. The more you shoot, the better you get. Questions about any of these apps or using your phone or Instagram or We'll start with the folks okay. at home. Uh, let's see. So, question from Rima Burzen. Hey, Rima. Do you typically shoot with the iPhone camera, the native camera, and then process, or do you use some of the cameras uh, that are like Visco or Camera Plus? What I do you use, use Camera Plus a lot, especially if I have a tricky exposure. Okay. Yeah. And if I, if I don't, I, I sometimes will start with the native one, and if I'm just not having good results, I'll switch over to Camera Plus. Which, as you're saying, allows a, you to adjust yeah. your exposure yeah. much yeah. more your, tightly. Your exposure and your focus can be done separately instead of all with the same thing. So I think it's a, it's a really good app to have as well, especially awesome. when you have a tricky exposure. Great. And that yeah. was Camera Plus. Yes. <laughs> no plus sign. Exactly. So I just wanted to clarify for folks at home who might not be as familiar with mobile photography. Yeah. Uh, the question was, are these programs being discussed for the iPhone or can they be used with Photoshop and Lightroom? So from this segment. They're, they're iPhone apps to be done right on your phone. If you need more space, you can use your iPad. You know, if it's really hard for you to process a photo with a small screen, it can also be done on your iPad. But they're meant to be used on your phone. <laughs> 